Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a biographical survival adventure film called Everest. Mount Everest is Earth's highest mountain above sea level, located in the sub-range of the Himalayas. Spoilers incoming. The film starts with Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary, who are the first two climbers to reach the summit of Everest. Since then, just a few hundred professionals have tried the same, with one in four deaths. Rob Hall, Jason Clark, who is portrayed in the year 1996, assembled his adventure consultant's crew and decided to attempt to climb Everest alone. Beck Weathers, John Hawks, an experienced climber, Doug Hansen, John Brolin, Yasuko Namba, Naoko Mori, and co-guide Andy, Harold, Harris, Naoko Mori, are present as Rob meets with his crew, Martin Henderson. They intend to embark on an adventure they hope will be fruitful together. Rob and his colleagues are in New Zealand and prepared to leave from the airport six weeks before the initial ascent. Guy Cotter, a friend and co-worker, and Helen Wilton, the base camp manager, are with him. Emily Watson, Sam Worthington. Rob tells his friends that he hired journalist John Krakauer, Michael Kelly, to write an article on them, which he was going to do for Mountain Madness, another expedition team. The death zone on Everest is dangerous because of its high elevation and high temperatures, which Rob later describes to his team. They hope to get through it quickly enough to avoid things getting very dicey. Rob bids his expectant wife Jan farewell before boarding the aircraft, Kira Knightley. Rob says he'll come home for the birth. He receives a message from Jan later informing him that they expect a girl. Before continuing up the mountain toward the base camp, the expeditions reach the mountain's base. Scott Fisher, the head of Mountain Madness, is there when Rob encounters him. Although they are still on good terms, he is a little irritated with Rob for convincing John to join their adventure. Caroline McKenzie, the camp's doctor, is later introduced to the group by Rob, Elizabeth Debicki. She and Rob warn the climbers of hypothermia and hypoxia threats, as well as the lack of oxygen at the summit of Everest. Climbers dying from the cold are depicted in videos. Beck contacts Peach, Robin Wright, his wife, from the base camp after forgetting to send her a message on their anniversary. She said she'd divorce him if he ever climbed another mountain because she doesn't like him scaling them. He was unreceptive. From base camp to camp two, trips led by adventure consultants and others travel. To traverse a crevasse, they use a fixed ladder as a bridge. Beck almost falls over as large chunks of ice break off and tumble down the mountain beneath the weight of everyone else climbing it. The rest of the way over, Rob leads him while he clings on for dear life. Rob urges Scott to join their adventures so that they can reach the summit safely and then return to the top later after he expresses some reservations to Scott. Despite his reservations and claims that he and Rob have distinct personalities, Scott eventually consents to the union. The two announce that they intend to have eight oxygen tanks at the top when they meet with their teams later. Ingvar Egert Sigurdsson's portrayal of Scott's guide Anatoly Bukriv claims that he will not utilize oxygen. The remainder of Rob's crew is urged to take oxygen. To discuss their motivation for climbing, the AC team meets in a tent at night. According to Doug, he wants to show that a regular person is capable of doing the seemingly impossible. Yasuko hopes to climb Mount Everest at the oldest age of any woman. On their summit, the teams run into difficulties, including numerous climbers starting to become sick, like Doug and Scott, Beck having vision issues from surgery he had a year prior, and the lack of fixed ropes over the south summit forcing some climbers to turn back. Beck lags on the ridge in the southeast. Guy, climbing the peak next to Everest, watches Rob and the others from his point of view and gets in touch to check on them. In the end, a few climbers start to reach the summit of Everest and leave their marks there. Yasuko places a Japanese flag on the summit after Anatoly touches it first. Helen is notified by Rob that they have reached the summit and that she and the team should celebrate. She supports the team along with the rest of the camp. Doug's condition is gradually worsening, and his oxygen levels are decreasing, yet he is still climbing. Insisting that it is finished and that he gave it an excellent run to Doug when Rob bumps into him on the way down, Doug is not yet pleased and decides he wants to continue climbing. Rob helps Doug to the summit because his resolve inspires him. When a massive snowfall approaches Everest, it will be difficult for the descending climbers. As the storm descends the mountain, Rob and Doug are struck, forcing them to seek shelter. 
As they descend, Rob discovers that the location of the needed oxygen tanks is devoid of any tanks, so he radios Helen to send some up. The gusts pick up as he and Doug continue to trek. Doug releases himself from Rob's guiding rope while still barely conscious. He loses balance and dies due to the wind's force and dizziness. Scott begins to experience hypothermia while Beck's vision deteriorates, requiring them to separate from their respective groups. Beck also experiences vision problems. Beck stays behind with Yasuko while the other climbers seek assistance. Rob approaches Andy and informs him that Doug has left. Until it's okay to move on, Rob and Andy wait on the mountainside. Sadly, Andy starts to experience hypoxia and thinks he's overheating. As a result, he takes off his clothes, which causes him to pass away. Guy has joined the camp, so Guy is sitting in the tent with Caroline, and Helen phones Rob to tell him to keep going down. Everyone in the tent breaks down in tears as he informs her that his hands and feet are frozen in addition to the deaths of Doug and Andy. By placing the phone next to the walkie-talkie, Helen calls Jan and convinces her to speak with Rob. Reminding her husband that he needs to return for the birth of their child, Jan urges him to descend safely. Helen informs Rob that the individuals who were supposed to bring him oxygen tanks aren't coming due to the appalling circumstances. Even while he makes an effort to move forward on his own, he is aware that his condition prevents him from doing so. He trips and makes a second call to Helen. She gives Jan another call so they may have one last conversation. He reassures her that he is at ease and inquires about Sarah, the infant. Jan begrudgingly consents to use the name, Sarah. Rob's final words to her are, Good night, my love. Please try not to worry too much. Under the ice and snow, Rob dies. Scott succumbs to the cold and passes away while lying in the snow. Besides Beck, Yasuko also passed away by his side. Beck never showed up at camp, so Helen contacted Peach to let her know. Peach then has to deliver her children the news. On the other hand, Beck begins to stand up and slowly makes his way back to camp despite having frostbite, mainly blind and almost entirely frozen. John spots him to inform Helen that Beck is still alive and radios her. She informs Peach of the news by calling her in turn. Together, they arrange for a chopper to land and return to Beck. The gusts and increased weight almost pull the helicopter down, but they manage to accomplish so and carry him to the ground, where he becomes hot. The other climbers and Helen head back home. Jan is shown being greeted by them at the airport and receiving a heartfelt embrace. Returning home, Beck gives Peach a bare embrace. Rob's body is shown in the final image, frozen and almost entirely buried in snow. According to the epilogue, Rob's body is still on Everest, along with the bodies of the others who died. We see images of the actual Scott Fisher, Andy Harris, Doug Hansen, Rob Hall, and Yasuko Namba. Frostbite caused Beck Weathers to lose both his hands and his nose. Sarah, a girl born to Jan Arnold, was named. The genuine Sarah Arnold Hall is then briefly depicted in a video. This movie has given us a beautiful and scary perspective at the same time where Hall, Fisher, Harris, Hansen, Namba, and three climbers from a party made up of Indo-Tibetan border police, the first Indian team to reach the summit from the North COL, 23,031 foot 7 comma 0 20 m, were also killed by the storm. Weathers also survived. It was the worst day ever recorded on Mount Everest at the time. The events described captured the entire globe's imagination and the media's attention around the clock as a tale of human endurance, resiliency, and uncontrolled ambition. The story of the courageous survivors and misplaced explorers is incredibly relevant and still has resonance today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. See you in the next video.